Can anyone hear me? Oh, yes. Great. So um, I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk to you about what the Mars program is focusing on and also to try and draw in as many partners to join us in this effort as possible. So you heard earlier when Tindy said, we don't understand the value um, of our impact on the coastal and marine environments. So these are some numbers that can show, um, begin to start, start showing you how much impact we actually have. Of the world's land mass, only about 5% is considered coastal. But in this 5% of the land mass, there are about 38% of the global population residing in this area. And this number is likely to increase with the emerging population and migration trends where more and more people are moving to big cities, which tend to be along coastal areas. So marine and coastal ecosystems provide a disproportionately larger, um, large amount of services to the world's populations. So to give you a visual of the human impact on the world's ocean, this map shows uh, where we have been affecting the oceans. The areas that are red and orange show where there's the highest impact, and as you can imagine, that's all along the coast. The areas where it's green and blue is where we've had very little impact. Now, you can see there aren't very many blue areas. In fact, 96% of the world's oceans have been impacted by human activity. So the result of our impact has meant that there's a lot of risk to marine and coastal environments. <coughs> and as we have been hearing about in the news, fisheries catches are decreasing even as efforts are increasing. Um, coastal habitats are being degraded, leading to increased erosion, like what's happening in Cancun, and um, decreased storm buffering capacity. And pollution is increasing, leading to decreasing coastal water quality. Now, what do we stand to lose if we are not successful in de developing more tools for protecting our ecosystem services? But more importantly, what do we stand to gain if we are successful? So, <laughs> ecosystem, ecosystem services are categorized into four different types. And the first one is provisioning services, which many of us here are know very well, um, the seafood that we get from the ocean, and uh, developing renewable offshore energy um, that hopefully will reduce our carbon footprint on the world, and as well as minerals and materials, and more importantly, as the water crisis um, is escalating, the desalination of salt water for fresh water is going to be increasingly important. Then there are the regulating services, such as, as climate regulation um, and natural hazard regulation that buffers coastal habitats from storms and tsunamis and floods and others such as water purification and water treatment and waste treatment. Then there are the more intangible, more ambiguous types of services, such as supporting services. Uh, the nutrient cycles that happen that um, make the planet go, as well as um, primary production. Um, that's the basis of all life on Earth. And then lastly, the reasons why we go to the beach, um, the cultural services, the aesthetics, the scenery and beauty that we get in coastal environments, and the education that we get from, um, from understanding our planet more and um, spiritual places uh, that are sacred to many communities. So why are we here talking about market-based mechanisms and payments for ecosystem services? One of the um, challenges has been that conventional management has not <coughs> been able to solve um, the, the issues that we need to manage our resources more carefully. One of the reasons is that the central governments are often disconnected from the users and the resources in the local environments, as well as insufficient financing. Um, so uh, 
payments for ecosystems may be a way to help alleviate this challenge. And as well, uh, um, so Marina and Coastal PES Payments for Ecosystem Services provides opportunity for sustainable financing of our resource, um, resources management, as well as a direct connection between users and the managers or stewards of the resources. But this is going to require synergies um, among governments and communities, as well as the resource managers, and one of the reasons why we're here today to build this community of practice. And, and also why there's a marine program in Forest Trends is that we, in the marine conservation community, the users, must, make, uh, must reach out to the land managers and the upstream managers and users that impact marine environments. So you're going to hear a lot about payments for ecosystem services and market-based mechanisms in the next couple of days. So I'm going to show you a, um, I'm showing you a very well accepted definition of PES. And it is a scheme in which the transaction is voluntary, hence the market part. Um, and there's a well-defined environmental service, such as the science that was alluded to earlier in the dialogue. And there's a buyer, of course, more than at least one, um, a provider or a seller. And the most important, I think, to eliminate the um, uncertainty is the conditionality of the payment. And in addition to payments for ecosystem services, there are other types of market-based mechanisms. And there are already existing market-based and market-like mechanisms out there, such as the water quality markets that, and wetlands banking and offsets you, that you heard earlier in the panel, as well as land and sea uh, easements and leases. And um, also what Chindi talked about earlier, about ocean zoning and marine spatial planning, we believe that these will um, give a lot of great opportunities to um, take advantage of market-based mechanisms. So Morris, the Morris program has st strategically picked four services, marine ecosystem services, to focus on. These services represent the greatest potential for opportunities for market-based mechanisms, as well as um, the greatest potential to provide benefits, such as coastline and beach st stabilization, as in the situation in Cancun and other parts around the world, um, fish nursery habitats that Michael also talked about earlier, and that has a connection with the mangroves, um, marine biodiversity that is the basis of the uh, well-functioning marine ecosystems. And lastly, water quality. Although um, Michael mentioned earlier, we're going to do uh, do some work in mangroves, and that's uh, one of the newest areas that we'll be focusing on. <coughs> and so we have these four services. We understand that they're not the only types of services that are available um, that we can serve. Um, we understand that, we recognize that our partners will be also um, looking to develop mechanisms um, to conserve other types of ecosystem services, and I hope that in the next um, couple of days you'll hear many of these examples and get very excited about the opportunities that are out there and be able to talk with one, one another and to develop um, more opportunities as well as demonstration projects on the ground to test these ideas. Thank you.